friends, I just want to say it is so special to be with all of you, and I'm grateful to the board of thinking of letting me celebrate my birthday with you. I I think it's probably in order because some of you who are listening to me, like Sally and and um, uh, some of our YOUers of um, ancient days, you were a part of my life when I arrived in Sacramento with Dorothy. Uh, it was over 50 years ago that we were together. So who could I better celebrate my 93rd birthday with than my spiritual family? So thank you, friends, for being with me today and supporting me. I want to talk to you today um, about love, but I want to begin by reminding us of what our thoughts are about the Old Testament of the Bible. When I think about the past, and I think, what did I think when I was in the Episcopal Church about the Old Testament? What I come up with is that I, I think I thought it was for real, that it was a mixture of spiritual insights and history. And um, then when I came into unity, I was told that within the Old Testament were these marvelous insights that were uh, stories that contained spiritual principles that we could all uh, benefit from. I don't know that I had any real thought about whether there was any reality to the Old Testament as far as history was concerned. But today, it is quite clear that there is no history to speak of in the Old Testament. Those of you who might listen to Quora, which is a um, metaphysical, not metaphysical, it is a, a internet contact where people can ask questions from all over the world about anything they want, and somebody will answer it, and quite often it will be an authority. And one of the most often asked questions is about the reality of the Old Testament. And it is quite clear now that the scholars from all over the world are in agreement that there is no real historical basis for the Old Testament. Esau and Jacob have been thrown out the window. And of course, the star of them all, Moses, and the whole story of the Jewish captivity, the Exodus, they're all gone as far as being historically real. And when I realize how many people subscribe to something like Quora and they get that insight, they live with the sense that the Bible really doesn't have any content for them, particularly in the Old Testament. Certainly no inspiration to follow Christianity was based basically on the Bible. But we are so blessed as I have already said, to know that the Old Testament is rich in allegory and in spiritual guidance. The Moses story, for instance, offers us the key to taking dominion of our lives, literally. It is the essence of today's metaphysical movement. As many of you know the story so well, Moses uh, was instructed by God when confronted at the burning bush with God's presence, God instructed him to go and to free his people from the Egyptians. And Moses rightly said, well, who am I going to say uh, sent me? What, what's your name? And God answered Moses and said, I am that I am. We now understand metaphysically that this story is telling us that the creative, freeing power of God expresses in each of our lives according to our personal use of God's name. I manifest in my life what I affirm is the truth about who I am, or I am that I think I am. I am that I think I am. So as Unity students, we know this is the most powerful affirmation, and movement of mind that we can possibly have. 
and that it gives us total dominion over our lives. That's why all Unity students radiate the glory, the health, the prosperity, the power demonstrated by Jesus. We know God's name and we use it to manifest only the good. You Unity students know that. I pause here briefly because I surmise that some of you may think there's a catch here somewhere because all my I am affirmations don't seem to manifest on cue. I was reflecting on this recently about something that I had been affirming uh, was true for my life. I am thought. And I realized how long I had been working with this and nothing had manifest. Granted, it was a pretty big affirmation. I'm not going to tell you what it was, but it was big. But still, the principle says it should have manifest, but it hadn't. And I was sort of in the space of thinking about that and dealing with some of the discouragement of it, when suddenly I heard in such a powerful intuitive movement in myself that reminded me of Proverbs 23, verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. And suddenly it hit me with more power, and some of you hearing this will think, yeah, well, I, I know that. But it hit me in a way it never had before that God does not manifest through our mental thought unless it is held in our hearts. The heart, the love center of our being, is the key to manifestation. The heart, the love center of our being, is the key to manifestation. The day that I had the intuitive experience of um, really beginning to feel that I heard what intellectually I had heard before, but suddenly I really heard it. And I just happened to pick up a case, a book out of my bookcase because I've been sort of trying to sort my books out. And so looking at them one by one to say, do I want to keep this or I want to get rid of it? And I pulled out this book and I looked at it and I thought, I don't, where did I get this book? It's called The Healing Code. And it was written by two men, both with a string of degrees after the names. One of them has a PhD and the other has an MD and other uh, degrees. And so they were obviously men of some thought. And when I picked that book up and I started to read, what was the code about? These are some of the headings I came across. Now, mind you, I had just really triggered into Proverbs 23 again. As a man thinketh in his heart. And so here are some of the headings in this book I just happened to pick up. You are who you are in your heart. Another one. What you really believe is what you believe in your heart. Another one. You are where you are based on what's in your heart. Another one, you do what you do based on what's in your heart. The heart rules. They say that in any disagreement between what's in your intellect and what's in your heart, the heart will always win. Now, I'm not sharing this to suggest that you get this book because there are some aspects of the book that I have to say I'm not sure about. But I share it only to say what a wonderful confirmation I felt within myself of this deepening of my appreciation that the consciousness, the creative consciousness of God does not work through our intellectual thought, but it works through the heart. And to realize that you and I have to learn how to think regarding all the major issues of our lives in our hearts. 
I found myself thinking when we say, well, let's all meditate together. Uh, where do you find yourself? And I appreciated that Tom, when he was talking about the energy from above and below coming together, he said it came together in our heart, not up in our heads. But I know for myself, and I think the majority of people, when you just get still and say, what's going on inside of you, you know, you, people tend to go to their heads. Because that's where we're so used to functioning from the intellect. Now, as we think about this and we think about the fact that we want to respond to this thought and realize, yeah, it must be true. The power is in our heart. So how do we, how do we get to our hearts? And I love this thought. I don't think there is any way into the heart except one way. And that is to experience the thought and the emotion of love. We must learn to feel our life desires, not just think about them. The only way we can ever really be attuned to the power of God so that we can know that that which we are affirming is coming forth in our lives is to learn to come from our heart. Surely this was the secret of the power and the majesty of Jesus Christ. He didn't come from his head. He came from his heart. It's not a surprise to me that two of the greatest metaphysical movements were started by women, not by men. Mary Baker Eddy started the Christian Science Movement. Myrtle Fillmore started the, the Unity Movement. As far as unity is concerned, of course, Charles brought together his marvelous intellectual support for Myrtle and what she had demonstrated to carry the unity movement and to expand it and just, for instance, studies of the Bible and the interpretation of metaphysics. That was a tremendous gift that he gave. But the power that originated these movements came from two women. And it's because, in my estimation, women in our culture had the privilege of being more related to the feeling nature than the thinking nature. And hopefully in most of their cases to come from the spirit and the center of love. When I talk about this, I realize that for me, it's um, a strengthening of my conviction that my primary work is to learn to come from my heart more and not just from my head. But it's also a lesson for everyone. It's not surprising that you and I are experiencing an incredible challenge in our world today. And there's a lot of negative energy around it. But fortunately, there are a lot of voices too who are recognizing that the pandemic and the economic challenge that are engulfing us, as well as the call for racial equality, that in the midst of these challenges is a fantastic opportunity for a transformative experience for the world. And that is but a duplication of what I'm affirming that we all individually need to take, and that is to come to the heart. I believe the solutions for these challenges that we have, not just in racial relationships, but in the pandemic and in the economic challenges, the ultimate solution must and will be found in the heart. I loved it uh, that this year, the 4th of July celebration on PBS, which I hope the number of you got to see it this year, uh, I knew that when I tuned into it, it was going to be different than any year before. There were no thousands of people gathered in front of the uh, 
heading there in Washington. There was no grand orchestra. And there were all the questions of racial relationship problems and, of course, the pandemic. And I thought, I wonder how they will deal with it this year. And I thought they did a great job. And it was right up front in the beginning when they began with the song, as some of you remember, put a little love in your heart. Put a little love in your heart. And then at the end of the program, which I, I think was about an hour, they ended with the song, What the World Needs Now is Love, Sweet Love. Love is all that there's just too little love. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. And that is all there is to little love. That's the answer. You and I have to learn how to get in our hearts and to love. And as surely as we do this, everything will change around us. I, I think of an area that I intellectually have a great trouble with, and that is that in our economics in our country, we are driven by whatever will sell kind of motive. It's not certainly a heart uh, suggestion that we want people to have a product that we know is going to be good for them, and that's what we want to uh, make them aware of. Unfortunately, much of the so-called selling on the internet and television today is whatever we can stimulate the people to buy. It doesn't necessarily say whether it's true or not. I'll, I'll, I'll pick on one example. I know that there is um, a lot of people in our country who, as they get older, find that they have difficulty tracking as they used to. And so one of the ways to sell a lot of products is to tell people, you've got a product that will help them to think the way they used to think when they were young. And so how do you do this? Well, first of all, you get enough money and you put it on the air that you have this product. And then you go around and you uh, tell all the pharmacists in the country that you are on national television and that you have this product that people are gonna be looking for. And so the pharmacist says, Oh, you're on regular television? Okay, I'll, I'll stock it. And so they stock it. And um, then the people who are doing the selling go back on television and they say, every pharmacist in the country is carrying this product because it's so good for you. Has there ever been a test to really prove this? No. And when I'm thinking of particularly the only one who ever ran a test on it was done in their own laboratories. And so I, I use that as an example of how the businesses around, certainly in our country, tend to come from the head, which is how can we make money? How can we sell a lot of products? And let's do whatever it takes to do it, rather than a heart decision, which is one of total honesty of a total desire to help and never sell a product that isn't truly going to help people. Well, I spent a little time with that because that's going to be the hard nut to change from moving, moving people to living from the heart. It will be the world of economy. I think in terms of race relationships and um, the pandemic, love is going to win much easier. And it, it will. The secret of our individual future success is to get our hearts into being centers of love. In our hearts, we can feel the presence of God fulfilling our hearts' desire it for good in every area of our lives. You know, when you Think about what I've said and think 
I know this is true. The power of the Christ is in the heart. And we in unity are supporting each other in knowing this. But how are we ever going to reach the world? I mean, we're such a small percentage of the people in the world. How can we do this? I love the word that I'm about to share with you because I know it's the truth. And when you hear it, I think you will too. There were two men who spoke to this issue that I'm aware of about how do you get a message that you think is true out to the world, or I should say, that is the truth. How do you get it out to the world? Thoreau, great American philosopher and writer, said, an assured cause need merely wait its proper time. An assured cause need merely wait its proper time. And then Teilhard de Chardin, said, a truth once seen, even by a single mind, always ends up by imposing itself on the totality of human consciousness. Don't you love that? Truth will always, eventually, be taken as a reality by the totality of human consciousness everywhere. And we are sort of the roots of what will one day be an accepted truth for the world. That what you affirm from your heart will always manifest in your lives. The greatest thing that you and I can do to accelerate this in our world today is to demonstrate it. And we can. And of course, we do from time to time because somehow I think it slips into our heart. But once we can always learn to think from our heart, to feel from our heart, our lives will be transformed. People will know you are different because of the power of your heart not just in the way you embrace people, but the way in which things seem to always go right for your life. The way you're able to walk through the years of your life in health and wholeness. And the way you are always surrounded by harmonious relationships with people. All of that, as you and I know, can be true if we learn to come from our heart secret to our individual future success is to get into our hearts by being centers of love. In our hearts, we can feel the presence of God fulfilling our heart's desires for good in every area of our lives. Well, friends, it's been wonderful being with you again as a birthday celebration. And, you know, I, I love all of you. As I said, some of you who are listening to me today have known me over 50 years. Uh, Sally was a soloist when we had our first meetings in the uh, theater downtown Sacramento. And the two Janets that tuned in today were in the YOU, the Youth of Unity. So thank you, all of you who celebrated with me today. And I give thanks that you share with me in the wonderful thought that we're going to put a little love in our heart and open the door to living in our hearts and knowing the best is yet to be for all of us. God bless you. Thank you so much, Reverend Phil Pearson, for those powerful words of truth. I want to acknowledge that for me, you have always been of this commitment to love manifestation to practicing the two great commandments, which are about love. So thank you so much for being part of us today and happy birthday. Many people asked at the top of the 
uh, time together if they could sing happy birthday and i thought that might be just a little bit much given the limitations of uber conference but uh, anybody that would like to give phil birthday greetings feel free to stay on the line after we finish the prayer for protection and uh, shower phil with some love so thank you so much reverend phil now's our time to share our prosperity with this ministry Prosperity always manifests as circulation of our good, sharing with our good and honoring the our source of our spiritual nourishment. So I invite us to take our offerings in our hand, either the real offering or virtually, and shower that offering with love. Love not just for this particular ministry, but love for this word this word that sets us free, this word that brings us into the heart and allows us to dwell there and experience that peace that passes understanding. You can share your prosperity with this ministry by various means, all of which are on the weekly e-blast or through the website. So let's affirm together divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. God is the source, and I am the channel. And for our being one with the substance of infinite prosperity, we are grateful. As always, it's a special, I'd like to offer a special invitation to join us in our midweek prayer service every Thursday morning, including this coming Thursday morning at nine o'clock, using the same call-in number on the Uber Conference platform. And feel free to stick around after for coffee and conversation. It's a good way to catch up with our brothers and sisters that we don't get to see on Sunday mornings, for now at least. So now we're going to stand and form a virtual circle, looking around the virtual room at one another, with that love that is always prevailing. And we're going to sing together our closing song, Love is the, love is the Only Way. And then we'll open the mics for the prayer for protection. Gordon? <laughs> 